I don't love you. I have a hate-hate relationship with this. Oh, their ship name is Grony. I don't know if I like that. Oh, why? <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope your holiday season is going great. I have a bit of a crack ship to share with you today. The crack ship that stole Christmas, I guess you could say. It's a classic tale of love, betrayal, and lust that'll make you laugh so hard your gut might just bust. Look at me go, Dr. Seuss. What the hell am I talking about? Well, I'll tell you in just a sec, but before we begin, I want to give a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Sakurako and Tokyo Tree. Sakurako and Tokyo Tree are monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes that offer a wide variety of different goodies for you to munch on, as well as a way to enjoy Japanese culture at home. Each box has 20 snacks. If you'd be more interested in traditional, authentic, artisan Japanese snacks, then Sakurako is the perfect box for you. Each box will include specialty teas, as well as one piece of special Japanese tableware. December's box comes with this furoshiki wrapping cloth, a beautiful special cloth that can be used to wrap gifts, bento boxes, books, and bottles. If you're more into the latest, most exclusive, limited edition snacks, then Tokyo Treat is up your alley with seasonal snacks, an instant ramen bowl, and a drink in every box. Booklets are also included with Sakurako and Tokyo Treat that go over all the different snacks as well as each month's different theme, so you can see what types of ingredients are featured and figure out what you want to try first. Sakurako's December theme is Tochiki Traditions. I was especially impressed by the uni rice cracker. Oh my god, it's huge. I will keep munching on this throughout the video. <laughs> the Tochigi Lemon Yokan. Ooh, the texture is like red bean. And these adorable traditional Beko Ame candies. They're so cute. <gasps> oh, it's so pretty, look at that. Oh, oh, there's so many different little shapes. There's this funky guy. There's a kitty cat. Tokyo Treat's December theme is Santa's Snack Fest, which gets right into the Christmas spirit, featuring these delicious milky flavored Kit Kats. Tea time with me. Ooh, that tea flavor is strong. This would go really good with a nice bitter tea. Petite potato nori and salt chips. I love this bear's face. He's like, ah! The tiniest little chips, they're so cute. They pack a punch in flavor though, my god. Ah! Tongari Christmas corn chips. It's corn. <laughs> And Kalpiko Milk Stars. I'm excited for these Kalpiko Stars. I'm an absolute ho, ho, ho for Kalpiko. Bottoms up. At first I was like, oh, it's just chocolate. And then the Kalpiko came in at the very end, just washing over. What a delicious chocolate treat. Whether you're a big foodie or someone who likes Japanese culture or just someone who wants a lot of different snacks, then Sakurako and Tokyo Treat both offer a lot of different goodies for you to try. I am a big fan of both boxes and really enjoyed this month's holiday treats. It's helping me feel festive. Use my code Koli for $5 off your first Sakurako or Tokyo Treat box through my links in the description. And this December, they're doing a free Tickets to Japan giveaway. So check out the links in the description if you're interested. Thank you so much Sakurako and Tokyo Treat for continuing to support my channel. Let's get back into it. I'm sure you've heard the story of the Grinch. Mean son of a who was born with a heart two sizes too small. He's from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, created by Dr. Seuss. I'm looking at his Wikipedia page right now. Though always hateful, he especially hates the Christmas season, making particular note of how disturbing the various noises of Christmas time are to him, including the singing of Christmas carols. Unable to stand the holiday any longer, he decides to destroy it once and for all. On Christmas Eve, he goes down into Whoville disguised as Santa Claus, steals all their Christmas sh and then yeets it off a mountaintop. The classic Christmas song, Your Mean, mean one, one, Mr. Grinch, was written Mr. for the 1966 Grinch. cartoon special, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The lyrics were written by Dr. Seuss himself, and the song was performed by Thurl Ravenscroft, a prominent American actor and bass singer. Okay, so cool lesson on the Grinch, I guess. Hold on. A few years ago, this post started gaining a lot of traction on Tumblr. Every time I listen to You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, I can't help but sit there and think, what did the Grinch do to hurt you? Because dude just stands there for two minutes and 58 seconds and drags the Grinch into the dirt. It was followed up by some replies. He stole Christmas, Kayla. Stop with your hashtag not all Grinch's propaganda. You know what? If someone told me I was a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce, I'd probably be bitter enough to steal Christmas too. But this... This is where it gets interesting. Interestingly, though The Grinch Who Stole Christmas is narrated by Boris Karloff, the big musical number is sung by the late Thurl Ravenscroft, 
an American voice actor better known as the voice of Tony the Tiger. You know Tony the Tiger, the mascot for Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, who's been looted multiple times to hell and back by the internet? Well, my headcanon is that the Grinch and Tony the Tiger had a bad breakup, and you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, is the resulting breakup song. Lightning John replied, did this really have to be the first thing I see when I opened up Tumblr? And then it only got better with fan you're art. This one. art by Iguana Mouth Mr. started a snowball effect. You're great. What the f What the f Tumblr? If I had to read this, you do too. I have a hate-hate relationship with this. Dot, 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 dot. And then the post just kept coming back as a Christmas tradition. I'm bothered by the fact that I'm not bothered by this. You're not bothered? I'm not only not bothered, I'm freaking invested. I'm having actual empathetic sadness for the Grinch. I want them to go into couples counseling. I want the 10 years later when Tony visits Whoville on business and meets the reformed Grinch whose heart has grown three times its usual size. I want them to reminisce over a shared dinner of roast beast and wine, then spend a drunken night together, then realize that maybe things are different and people really do change. I want a three-act story where there's a long dark night of soul searching and the realization that maybe we've all got a little bit of bad banana with greasy black peel inside us, but that doesn't mean we can't make a damn fine banana bread if someone will give us a chance. Maybe we've all got a little bit of bad banana with greasy black peel inside us, but that doesn't mean we can't make a damn fine banana bread if someone will give us a chance is an incredibly profound quote and I did not expect to get it from a Grinch ex Tony the Tiger post. The crack ship was sailing strong. The first official fanfic for this festive ship was posted on December 8th, 2016. It's called Somebody I Used to Know and it's tagged this isn't crack, this is a serious fic. Normally his songs were a direct outlet for his feelings, whatever they may be, and the catharsis he got from putting everything into words into something that makes a semblance of sense was the only thing that really kept him sane. But the only thing on his mind was his stupid boyf ex-boyfriend. I'm so I read the first line. <laughs> Tony was a singer, a songwriter. It wasn't just his profession, it was who he was. Oh my god, it wasn't too horrible of a breakup, he supposed. It was a long time coming, for sure. They just had such wildly different personalities, interests, and ways of seeing the world. Grinch was always such a pessimist, a dark cloud hanging over his head and feeling like the world was out to get him. On his bad days, he'd take it out on Tony, griping at him about how he was so stupidly happy. He could brush this off usually, but it piled up. With a sigh, he traces Grinch's smile with a claw, a combination of feelings roaring around in his chest, wistfulness, regret, and most notably, irritation ebbing high enough to almost be considered anger. He impulsively grabs an edge and wrenches it down, only a little, but fast enough to not put much thought into it. The tears right over the insignificant space between their bodies, his green hair is such a contrast to Tony's own primarily orange fur, and looking at the new imperfection, he's hit with a crashing wave of relief. That was the push he needed to blow past whatever lingering hesitation and guilt lurking around inside him, and now it's like he's free to do whatever he wants. First, he finishes ripping the photo, slowly this time, as to drag out the feeling. As he does this, he starts humming, a tune forming in his head. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Oh my god, this comment. When I saw that Tumblr post, I was kinda half serious, but now I actually feel bad for them. Help, these are two characters not made for angst. And now all I think of when I see Tony or the Grinch is the ship! There are currently 14 works on AO3 for the Grinch x Tony the Tiger. Some of these are pretty recent too, like the latest fic was posted in July of this year. There's an explicit BDSM gunplay one, a The Grinch Tony the Tiger Count Chocula three-way fic, The Grinch and Tony don't want Tony's old friend Count Chocula to feel alone on Christmas, tagged with past Count Chocula x Tricks the Tricks Rabbit, as well as with that said, the Grinch is totally a f power bottom. Jesus Christ. An Mpreg fic retelling of the Lost meme. The most popular The Grinch x Tony the Tiger fic was done by a Tumblr user named God called God's Grinch x Tony Fix It Fic, which also has its own pod fic, just in case you wanted it in audiobook form. Now I'm getting invested in this, hold on. <laughs> As the Grinch turned and caught sight of Tony, their face curled into a wonderful, awful smile. A tiny, treacherous voice in Tony's head said, it's good to be home. Well, the Grinch drawled, pleased as anything. Would you look at the cat who got dragged in? Tony, baby, you're an absolute mess. You look like you've been stampeded upon by a herd of Hortons. Tony smiled despite himself. I've been here two minutes and you're already telling me how bad I look? 
That's gotta be a record. Nah, the Grinch said, bounding down onto a nearby sofa. It had exposed springs and a ridiculous amount of stuffing, and bounced enthusiastically while the Grinch got seated. I didn't say bad, I said messy, disheveled, bedraggled, a bit slapdash. Oh my god, Tony's noticing how the Grinch changed for the better. Tony considered himself fairly easygoing, even if he sometimes cared a little too much about being well-liked. But even he couldn't stand the Who's. They were a cult of inbred extroverts, as far as he could tell. Emphasis on the cult-like tendencies and the extroversion. Any excuse to celebrate and make noise. Christmas was the worst, but Tony had made the mistake of visiting one year for Easter. And well, as for the inbreeding, it was hard to tell in a town where everyone had the same surname. Tony had grown up in a Catholic family, an enormously Italian Catholic family. And even he thought someone should stage some sort of intervention. Oh, their banter, their banter. Sure. I suppose, the Grinch said nonchalantly, the therapy's actually helping. Which is how the Grinch dropped a bombshell and Tony learned another incredible thing. Namely, that the Grinch, of all people, was in therapy. I, said Tony, have questions. Am I allowed to ask questions? Is that something we do? The Grinch spread their arms regally, draping their lacy sleeves over their chair like some sort of benevolent oligarch. Ask away, they commanded generously. Maybe it was the beer and bottles, maybe it was the green fire with its dubious flickering fumes, maybe it was because Tony was finally back again on Mount Crumpet, feeling relaxed and wanted and welcome in a way he hadn't in years. Maybe, just maybe, it was the tiny voice in his head whispering, Home, this is what home feels like, you fool. Whatever the case, they stayed up well into the night, chattering and whispering, and then just sitting in silence, watching the fire go down. The embers gave a sputter here and there, coughing themselves back to life. Outside, the wind howled, whispering a merry tune of welcome. Holy sh**, the first chapter got over a thousand comments. There's good art for this fic too. I could smell the sexual tension coming off these two. Or is it just the Grinch? The lore just keeps getting deeper. There's also a sequel to God's Grinch x Tony Fix It Fic, despite the fact that the fic isn't actually complete yet. The Grinch and Tony have long since reconciled and had two children together. Gritty, eight years old, and the Lorax, three years old. However, Tony's job leads to a shocking discovery which can only unite the family further. Tony's retirement from ice hockey and American football isn't keeping him off the field or away from the puck, and his athlete's determination and tactical thinking can only go so far without the Grinch's wisdom and kindness. Set around the time of the Kellogg's adverts, we delve deeper into the kitchens of Whoville than ever before. I'm intrigued, and not even that face that the Lorax and Gritty are their love children. I'm gonna go on Google and type the Grinch x Tony the Tiger and see what comes up. Oh, their ship name is Grony. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Much. I don't love you. And then Tony's just crying. You've got their love child, Gritty. Oh, well, um, hello? <laughs> oh my god, it keeps on going. Why do they have to use the 3D animated Benedict Cumberbatch Grinch, though? Like, you couldn't have gone with the classic? The distortion on his stomach. <laughs> Is that the family guy, Tony the Tiger? <laughs> Oh, why? Why, why, why would you inflict this on us? I am suffering. This is horrible. And now I'm sharing it with you guys. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm pretty good at explaining cultural stuff from the internet to my coworkers, but there's absolutely no way I could explain why hearing you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, on the radio makes me think of Baby Gritty. That's so wholesome, actually. What the hell? Yeah, okay, I ship it. Why is it the Grinch x Tony, but not Tony x the Grinch? Because the Grinch is a power bottom. We've established this. Here's a new challenge for y'all. Which ship dynamics do the Grinch and Tony the Tiger fall into? And so lovely viewers. I hope this Christmas and every Christmas that follows, whenever you hear the song, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, you think of Grony and all the different stories they share together. Thank you so much for sticking around and letting me share this with you. What are your thoughts on this crack ship? Do you find it funny? Disturbing? Both? Let your thoughts be free in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video, I hope. Bye! <laughs>